Hello, my name is Deborah Rosen. I direct quality and health education at Northeast Valley Health Corporation. I'll be presenting today on care delivery and coordination for colorectal cancer screening. And just to give you a little background about Northeast Valley Health Corporation, we are a federally qualified health center located in the northern part of Los Angeles County. We have 14 licensed clinic sites. In 2016, uh, we had approximately 260,000 visits, and that is uh, over 72,000 users or patients in that same year, 2016. 86% of the population is Latino, and 97% less than 200% of federal poverty level, and 76% uh, less than 100 of FPL. And in terms of our ages, we are still relatively, uh, have a relatively young population. 52% are between 0 and 17%, and 48% are 18 and up. About 23% uh, of our patients are uninsured. Almost all of our children in, are insured, but the 23% represents uh, our adult population. So a little bit of background of our work around colorectal cancer screening. Northeast Valley Health Corporation was funded through the American Cancer Society and Walgreens in a community health initiative from January 2013 through September 2015. And the goal of the program was to increase colorectal cancer screening rates. We did a number of different interventions. We implemented staff education provider reminders, automated phone calls and letters, and we utilize students' volunteers. This allowed us to evaluate the effectiveness of various interventions, so we learned a lot from that grant period. Quarter one of 2012, our baseline rate showed 28.6% of our population between 50 and 75 years of age had their annual colorectal cancer screen. And at the end of the funding, we were up to 45.6%. So although we would like to be much higher, we did make uh, quite a bit of progress over that period of time. So based on our previous experience and the effective interventions we implemented at Northeast Valley, we really divided these interventions in three different categories. And I'm going to be talking about each interventions that are within each of these categories in a few minutes. So the first category is staff-driven interventions. Second category is patient-driven interventions. And the third is some innovative approaches that we've been using at Northeast Valley. So the first, uh, there are quite a few. I'll be discussing staff-driven interventions. That involves staff training, population management work, clinical decision support at point of care. We do a lot of work with data collection and analysis. We've done a lot of work also in employee engagement, and we have a clinical incentive program, again, also to engage employees in this work. And we have a missed opportunity report uh, for those of you who've worked in immunizations that uh, comes from immunization work that we've done in the past. So those are patients who came in, needed a colorectal cancer screen, but left without one. So I'll be talking more about details uh, around that. So we're starting with uh, staff training. In services throughout all health centers were conducted to train staff about new kits. We went from FOBTs uh, in December of 2015 to the FIT kit um, through, and that in-service occurred through May 2016. So we distributed handouts on how to document that a fit kit was given so that we can follow up with patients who were given a fit kit but not yet returned them. So we also worked on population management and that occurs both at the care team level. We conduct outreach activities to improve clinical outcomes. So the care team does use a patient list from eye to eye tracks, that's our population management system, and they also use clinical decision support tools also through eye to eye tracks, and that identifies patients at the time of the visit 
who need a FIT kit or colorectal cancer screening. The quality improvement staff also uses various outreach methods, and these include automated phone calls, letters, and text messages. So this is a picture of our clinical decision support and outreach tool, as I mentioned. And as you can see toward uh, the right lower side, it shows that uh, fecal occult blood uh, was completed in March of 2015. So since it has been over a year, it is showing that either the FOBT or the FIT kit is due today. So this is what the staff on the care teams will see as that patient comes in for their visit. And yes, we do print this out on every patient uh, uh, with a scheduled visit or with a visit at Northeast Valley Health Center. So just to go into our fourth area, which is data collection, aggregation, and analysis, uh, Northeast Valley is truly a data-driven organization, and the data is important to improve organization, organizational performance. The best way to achieve better care is by collecting data, and it truly is the foundation of performance improvement. Measuring the performance of processes that support care and using that data to make improvements. So we do analyze the data using some statistical tools and techniques. We analyze trends, patterns, and performance le levels that suggest opportunities for improvement. Data are graphically displayed and analyzing using run charts, bar graphs, and interactive dashboards. They are posted on our intranet site on a monthly basis. So staff, it supports staff engagement in quality improvement, and all levels of staff can access this information, no passwords needed, um, and easily access how their site or even care team is doing in many of our clinical measures. So the dashboards are created and reviewed by various committees. We have the Corporate Quality Improvement Committee that meets quarterly, and we also have a Clinical Performance Improvement Committee meeting eight times a year. We have monthly provider meetings that uh, is by discipline, so this one would go to the adult provider meeting, of course. And then at the care team and site level, we have practice improvement teams. They're called PIT teams. And that's a representative of various staff members who come together monthly and work on quality improvement. And we also engage our patients and families in an advisory council to get their feedback and involvement in quality improvement. And this information is distributed to stakeholders, including Northeast Valley employees and board of directors. So this is a copy of our intranet page, and as you can see where that red arrow is, there's an icon called dashboards, and these are the various dashboards that we have, and under clinical dashboards, you would find uh, colorectal cancer screening among many other clinical measures. So it's just a matter of going to our intranet site and clicking on those icons. And this is a copy of uh, what a trending data or graph would look like. And this is for our Medicare population. And uh, this is a little bit higher than our overall population. So the blue line is the trending line for our Medicare population. The black line is for all of all, overall Northeast Valley. So you can see toward February through May, that's when we transitioned from the FOB test to the FIT kit transition period. And we thought, since we were going to each of the sites and providing training, that this would actually increase rates. But as you can see, there was actually a decline in uh, colorectal cancer screening during that time. So we believe that although education is important, it is the first step and does not improve rates by itself. So we continued to see a drop, and then uh, we decided that uh, we needed to implement additional intervention even though our funding had ended. And so through September and November, we had interns uh, from California State University, Northridge, and they started uh, live phone calls, which we know are very effective, but it is very time consuming. So they called a number of patients who had received a FIT kit but hadn't returned it yet, 
and they did get over 50% requesting another kit and over 50% returning it. So we see a little uptake in our trending data. This is uh, a sample of our bar graph, and because we're so large, we are able to compare. This is just our sites within Northeast Valley, and as you can see, there is a wide range within our organization. So at the higher end, San Fernando, our largest health center with close to 3,000 patients in the age range of 50 to 75, has a fairly high rate compared to the lower end. That T for wellness, um, that is our homeless population, so you expect a little bit more challenges there. But Sun Valley and Valencia are two of our primary care sites. So what we do with this is really look to the sites that are performing well in this area and learn from them best practices. So next, uh, this is again how we engage employees in quality improvement. So providers, managers, and staff are the foundation of the program. And participation by all staff is essential to the program's success. As I mentioned, we can collect data via databases and tools. We help identify opportunities for improvement based on that data analysis. Employees take part in QI meetings, and they participate in PDSA models like Plan, Do, Study, Act. So this is another approach to engaging employees and staff in QI. We started a couple years ago a quality improvement or a clinical performance improvement incentive program. And this is where each site uh, gets to choose one clinical measure. We have so many that we're working on, but they just choose one to focus. So the program is designed to improve clinical outcomes. A clinical measure is chosen by site, as you can see. And we expect them or hope that they'll improve by 2% from quarter to quarter, and if they do, they will receive $50 for meeting their quarterly goals. And that would then be a maximum of 200 for the year, and the staff do get to use that for parties or other activities or events at the site. So the missed opportunity that I mentioned earlier on uh, was actually quite eye-opening. Previously, we had put blame, quote, blame on the patient for not returning the fit kits. So we would say we're giving out these kits, but the patients just aren't returning it. But we looked at a new report. We generated it for a year back. And we looked at active patients between the ages of 50 and 75 who had a medical visit and completed an appointment in the last year. Patients um, have not received a procedure or referral for fit in the last year or a, re or a procedure or referral for a colonoscopy in the last year or um, really no one is getting sigmoidoscopies, but that's also a criteria um, that would fit colorectal cancer screening. So basically, we're looking at patients who have missed the opportunity to be given a fit kit or a referral for a colonoscopy. So this is the missed opportunity report. And this is um, where the lower number is the higher achiever. So if you can see Mission College, which is a junior college in the area, they have a very uh, young population, as you can imagine, so only 12 patients in this group were due in the last year. They had an appointment and were due for a colorectal cancer screening. And 100% were not given the FIT screening. Whereas Santa Clarita, which is the highest performing health center at Northeast Valley, 360, 360 were due. 224 were not given the FIT kit, and so their missed opportunity rate is 62.2. So again, um, if they don't give it or if they don't document it, it's going to come up as a missed opportunity. So next I'm going to move into patient-driven interventions, and that uh, is divided into outreach and recall. So I'll be discussing those two areas. In outreach, Northeast Valley Health Corporation have used letters, text messages, and automated calls for patients due for their annual screening for colorectal cancer. The various approaches that uh, we considered and continue to consider is um, letting patients know to call a number to receive a FIT kit clinic, include the FIT kit in the mailed envelope. This test is called FIT 
and it's recommended yearly for adults 50 to 75. And it uh, will screen for any blood in the stool that can be early screening signs of colorectal cancer. The test is easy to complete at home. You can pick it up, pick up the free test at your local health center, or you can call the health education department. So our recall process, um, we were able to generate reports through eye to eye tracks on patients who have received a fit kit but had not returned it within two weeks. So this is a very successful intervention. These letters are sent to patients informing them that they received the kit but did not return it. And this is almost like a second knock. So this is patients who received that kit while they were in the health center, but now a letter is coming and reminding them to return it. So following the letter, if they still didn't return it two weeks later, we had health education interns initiate live calls to patients who had still not returned this fit kit. So although Phone calls are very effective. As you can imagine, they're very intensive. Uh, but it is only after we have given the fit kit, uh, sent a letter out to those who hadn't, haven't completed it in two weeks, and then waited another two weeks. So that number is reduced dramatically. So our innovation, uh, innovative approaches include a poop emoji pillow and fit toolbox kit. So this is our poop emoji. We try to make um, engaging in quality improvement fun. So we, we make QI fun at Northeast Valley. And this poop emoji was given to our Canoga Park Health Center because they created their own fit kit where they were able to demonstrate to the patient how to properly uh, complete the test. So it's part of their education process. And as you can imagine, we were getting some of the kits uh, overfilled and not acceptable for testing, and so we wanted to make sure that we really engage the patient in how to properly complete the test. So this has made it fun, and now that um, each month the poop emoji goes to another health center who have been successful at either improving rates, colorectal cancer screening rates, or have an innovative uh, intervention. So this is another example of staff using Play-Doh to go over how to complete the test. And yet, um, just another example of how they, uh, visuals that we've used to make sure our patients are uh, educated properly. So our achievements include the clinical decision support at point of care and identifying missed opportunities for distributing the fit kit. We also di disseminate data and our QI achievements via the dashboards. And this, as I mentioned, is accessible to all staff on Northeast Valley's intranet site. And we compare our benchmarks outside of Northeast Valley, but also from site to site, and even within the same health center from care team to care team. So the idea is to really learn best practices from other health centers. And what we're learning now as we continue this work is that our, our staff at the health centers are telling patients, instead of returning your fit kit in two weeks, telling them to return it tomorrow. And that's been another best practice that we've identified, and we're sharing that from site to site. So we've also involved the care team and the provider and all line staff in QI activities. We have the incentive program, as mentioned, and our practice improvement team at each health center, and also our provider meetings where we share best practices and data. Effective outreach methods to patients, as mentioned, includes automated calls and text messages, and also those live calls by interns reminding patients who've received a fit kit to return the completed kit to their health center or to complete their colorectal cancer screening. So the challenges are many, but um, text messaging is relatively new. We've been using it uh, throughout our health centers and using it more and more. Uh, live calls are the most effective, but they're time intensive. We do rely on undergraduate health education interns. That can be difficult to sustain, but we're close to Cal State Northridge, and we have a new crop usually every uh, semester. And there's also the cost issue. So mailing letters to patients 
are quite expensive. And so we are moving toward, as I said, the text messaging rather than letters. And then mailing the kits to patients, we have not been doing that, but data from Kaiser demonstrates strong effectiveness. It would, it would be about $5 per patient. We do offer patients to mail back the kits if they are interested. So next steps are continuing to evaluate our most effective interventions. We want to evaluate whether actions resulted in improvement, uh, whether our actions resulted in improvement through our data analysis. We're exploring the use of data analytic tools to determine best approaches by comparing methods, cost, and staff time. And we want to continue working uh, at population health at the care team level. So as we provide provider or care team specific data, we want those care teams to really uh, be in incentivized to increase their rates around their population. And all Northeast Valley employees participate in performance improvement efforts to take ownership of their data. So our next step is developing a clear plan for sustainability. So without funding, what are we able to continue? Text messages we have found to be the most cost-effective method at Northeast Valley. We recently received additional funding to the, from the California Colorectal Cancer Coalition or C4. We're continuing the staff training. We're also implementing those recall letters that I mentioned before for patients who've received the fit kits and implementing those live calls. We do give them a telephone number to call us if they would like to receive an additional fit kit. And we share best practices and standardized approaches for the organization. So in addition to telling patients to bring it back tomorrow, more recently, we've um, looked at our workflow and uh, the best practices to be giving the kit out at intake, uh, show that provider is seeing that the patient has the fit kit so they can re, he or she can reinforce the importance of the test. And then our exiting MA is the one that documents the fit kit given and provides the education to the patient. So that seems to be a best practice at Northeast Valley. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you so much.